everybody, it's Chris Eads, and on the line is Wu Teeny here with another Gay Gamer Video Podcast. Uh, this week, uh, I saw, obviously, Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Uh, I couldn't see it in IMAX 3D, unfortunately, because there was only one IMAX 3D showing, and it was crowded, but more importantly, it was at a very uh, inopportune time of the day for me, so I said, no, I will just go see it at a regular 3D showing, uh, which is earlier in the day and uh, much easier for me to get in and out of. Um, I was a little concerned, actually, because during the trailers, like, anytime there was any kind of camera movement, the, the, the projection got, like, super jittery, and I was like, ooh, that's not good. I hope they fix that. Um, but once they switched to the 3D trailers, um, it was perfectly fine and there was no jittery at all, so I'm assuming it was something to do with projecting 2D trailers with a 3G projector or something. I don't know. Um, and it was also funny because during the 3D trailers, they of course showed another one for Avatar Way of Water, and people will literally ooh at certain shots in the Avatar trailer because the 3D is so good. Uh, no one oohs at the actual movie that we see because the 3D is just an afterthought and not really, the director's not really doing anything with it, so it's like, eh. So there's no ooing and eyeing, but there's ooing during the, the Avatar trailer, which I find very amusing, and I'm very much looking forward to it, because it's oh, gorgeous. Anyway, how was the, how was the play, Mrs. Lincoln? Um, Wakanda Forever is good. It's very good. Um, it's just really, really long. Um, like, crazy long. Um, and I don't know for sure, but I suspect that the basic plot was probably what it would have been. It's just that they had to deal with the death of Chadwick Boseman, so they have to deal with T'Challa's absence, and that added a lot to the runtime. So I feel like a, like a two-hour movie suddenly became like a two-hour and 40-minute movie. Um, I don't know. But there's a lot to deal with. And then there's also, a, like, there's a lot to deal with with T'Challa, but then there's also the main plot, which is also a lot to deal with, because there's a lot going on. Um, but it's it's really long, but it's never boring. That's the thing. It's just really long. Like, it's just overstuffed. And I, I don't know what you could have cut. Like, the easiest stuff to cut would be stuff with the characters dealing with T'Challa's absence, but those performances are so good, and I, you know, it's very emotional, and like the first Black Panther movie, the emotional core really makes this one work, and it puts it above some of the other Marvel movies that are just kind of slugfests, you know? So, I don't know what you'd cut. Um, I will say that Namor is great, uh, Tana Cuerta is terrific, and kind of hot, and the character, although not Atlantean, uh, spoiler alert, but you probably already knew that. Um, he's from, like, this ancient Mayan civilization kind of thing instead. Um, and I don't know if that's to avoid comparisons to Aquaman's Atlantis and make it something special for Marvel, um, or if it's because they want it to be based in a real-world culture, uh, you know, to make it more grounded. Um, I don't know. But uh, it still works, and he's still Namor, you know? It's the same character, he's kind of a dick, but he's kind of charming, and he's kind of right, but goes about it in the wrong ways, just like Killmonger in the first movie. Uh, so it helps, he makes a good uh, villain. Um, I say villain and then I'm like, no, actually, there are scenes where he is literally a complete a-hole villain. So yeah, uh, but still slightly sympathetic, um, and I say, as I said, kind of hot. Um, the problem for me was uh, Riri Williams, who is Ironheart in the comics. Um, here in this movie, unfortunately, I feel like she's more she's introduced as a plot point, and then she doesn't actually get to become a real character. Um, she doesn't have like an arc or anything because there's no time for that because there's so much else going on. And I feel like she kind of got short shrift, and so it sort of feels like she's unnecessary and you could have dropped her from the movie and it wouldn't have really hurt anything, except for the fact that she's a very major plot point that like puts some major things in motion. So, you know, that would be hard to write around. <laughs> You'd have to find another way to do it. But um, 
it's just unfortunate that like I feel like maybe she did have an arc and it ended up on the cutting room floor because they were pushing three hours and I'm like whoops um, but maybe she'll be better if she shows up in another Marvel movie at some point I don't know overall like I said it was very good um, and definitely worth a watch just do not drink anything before the movie or because you're gonna have to pee halfway through it like I did and you're gonna be very uncomfortable for the end um, so uh, yeah. Then as for games, um, while I was finishing up A Plague Tale Innocence last month, uh, Sony was having a sale in the PlayStation Store of, like, scary Halloween games, you know, for Halloween. So I was browsing through to see what's what, and there was, eh, and I saw that they had The Banishing of Ethan Carter, and that was on sale for, like, $3.00. And I said, you know what, I've always been curious, for $3, let's do it. And so I bought it for $3, and then as soon as I finished Plague Tale Innocence, I booted up The Vanishing of Ethan Carter. Um, because it's totally up my alley. I know people, like, make fun of, you know, walking simulators, but, like, to me, like, they're great. Like, I love adventure games, and for a point-and-click adventure game to evolve into this, like, fully realized three-dimensional world that you can explore and then solve the puzzles like that's amazing and especially when it's a world as beautiful as the vanishing beacon carter which is just gorgeous landscapes and everything it was really quite beautiful um especially for a game that's this old um the people less realistic but you know whatever the environment is the important thing because that's what you're spending most of your time with um the puzzles were fine um there were a couple that got a little bit trial and error-y uh and one of them was so obtuse that i had to actually look up online like what am i doing wrong because it was that kind of adventure game thing where you want to do something but the game won't let you and you have to try to figure out like what am i not doing right to let myself do this like let me use this lantern that i just fixed to light the mausoleum and they're like no 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 because no. it turned out that you needed another item entirely to light the mausoleum not the lantern and it's all like what uh and you had to like that was hidden behind a tree so you had to like scour the entire graveyard to find it oh there it is over there um so that was a little frustrating but most of the puzzles were pretty good and you know you have those aha moments where you're like oh i get it it's this and that oh okay i mean do 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 and you know and then you're great uh, and then you feel very clever um but i will say that unfortunately the story didn't really work for me because as you go exploring around this world, this village, whatever, um, you encounter scenes, like a murder scene, and you have to like figure out what happened and you find all the clues. And then it basically, you, you can see into the other world so that you see moments of how that murder played out. And you have to put them in order, which I, I liked that part putting those in order because that was like you know a brain teasery kind of thing and it was it was a little more logical than some of the obtuse adventure game type puzzles but once you have them in order then you watch as the scene plays out and the person is killed and stuff happens and you you meet Ethan's mom and dad and brother and uncle and whatever and it's like the problem is is that you get one of those story sections but then there's a lot of exploring and puzzle solving and searching and looking and then you get another story section. So they're so, so fragmented and spread out, they don't hold together. So they didn't really have any like impact for me as a story where I went, oh no, that's crazy. What a revelation, you know, like it didn't really play out like that because they were so fragmented. And then at the end, like you get to the end and you find Ethan and then because I had found and solved all of the different murder puzzles, I ended up with the real ending, apparently, because I looked on Wikipedia because I'm like, I need to know what the hell this was all about because the story didn't hold together or make sense to me, didn't track, so I had to look on Wikipedia to read a plot summary. And I found out that because I had done everything, I got the real ending, which then basically says, never mind all that, here's the real ending. And it was like, oh, okay, that's sort of random, and I, I mean, I guess it sort of negates everything, and it's this random accident, but then 
I guess that makes it more tragic. I guess maybe that's the point. I don't know. But it just, the story felt unsatisfying, you know? So that was sad. But for $3, I enjoyed it. Um, and again, it was a beautiful environment to just walk around in, even if you're not solving puzzles. Um, like, I would love something like that in VR, where you can just walk around and explore the woods and just enjoy the scenery. Um, forget the murder puzzles. Um, so then, as I was wrapping that up, um, I noticed, obviously, everyone out there, some of you perhaps, are playing God of War Ragnarok, because that just came out last week. And, in fact, I know that the guy in the apartment behind us uh, on Friday, he had the curtains open, and he has a really big TV, and I saw him playing God of War Ragnarok literally all afternoon. Um, can't see it in the picture, obviously, because it's all blurry and zoomed in, but it was clearly God of War Ragnarok. I could tell. It was the, that big of a TV. And I'm assuming on a play, PlayStation 5, because that apartment is a, a duplex penthouse thing that costs almost 10 grand a month. So, obviously, he's got a large super expensive TV and a PlayStation 5. Um, but with everyone playing that, it wasn't even on my radar that this was coming out because I never played the first one. Um, I had never played any of the original God of War games at all. Um, so when God of War came out in 2018, I think it was 2018, I didn't care. So I never played it. So now everyone's playing the sequel, they're like, oh my God, it's so good, it's so good. And I'm just like, you know, I never played the original. But... I happen to have added that God of War game into my PlayStation Plus library when it was free one month, whenever that was, I don't even know. So I thought, what the hell? Let's download it and give it a shot. Um, so I did, um, but I've literally only just started. Like I barely scratched the surface. I haven't even finished the first area yet. Like I, I think I have, I just need to like have a story scene play out and then it'll be over and we can move on to the next place. Um, Cause there were a bunch of fights and exploring and then there was a big boss battle against a troll. So now we're back home and I think there's just some story stuff to work through, um, but we'll see. Um, the graphics are gorgeous and detailed and I'm just like, oh, this is nice and the combat is okay. So I'm like, all right. Um, so um, I will, that's, that's my like brief first impressions of it. Um, so I will actually talk more about it in the next episode, once I've played it for a decent amount of time and can form actual opinions on it, um, I'm sure all of you have already played it, uh, so you may not even care what I think about this old game, but um, because there aren't any big new releases coming out, I've been working through my old game library and like playing stuff that I've downloaded, and especially the stuff I've paid for, uh, and some PlayStation Plus games that I downloaded, that I added to my library and stuff, just, you know, why not? They're there. Play them. Give them a shot. If you don't like it, it didn't cost you anything except the time it took to download, which on the PlayStation 5 is much faster. So I appreciate that. So uh, come back next episode and I'll talk about God of War, but I'll also talk about other things too. So see you then. Bye! <laughs>